Okay, it's going to be a classic review of WWE Money in the Bank 2013. By the time you see this video, Money in the Bank will be happening tonight. It doesn't look like the extravaganza that they were hoping for. Plus, you got SummerSlam within the same month. So it definitely looks like a show to set up SummerSlam more than anything. Definitely does not feel like it's one of the big five. But we'll see what happens. Um, let's just focus on Money in the Bank 2013. Definitely one of the better Money in the Bank pay-per-views. Um, yeah, maybe besides 2011, this has got to be the second best Money in the Bank pay-per-view. It's, it's definitely got to be up there and uh, possibly the second best pay-per-view of 2013 uh, right behind SummerSlam. I mean, they really stacked this show. They promoted the hell out of Rob Van Dam coming back. Uh, I think RVD is an underrated draw. The, the pay-per-view buy rate actually was boosted by 11,000 compared to 2012. So we're going all the way back to July 14th, 2013 from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yeah, the Philly fan for a Philadelphia pay-per-view, the fans were hot from start to finish here. Uh, from the Wells Fargo Center, 15,000 in attendance. Pay-per-view buy rate was 199,000. Money in the Bank 2012 only did 188,000. So I, I really think RVD is an underrated draw. You know, uh, apparently Triple H had a lot to do with bringing back Van Dam with the promotion. And uh, Van Dam even said that Triple H was like a totally different guy. Like, um, he was like, you know, it, when you go back to the early stages, I, I think there was a lot of. And Van Dam had this problem with a lot of different guys from Angle to Jericho and even Triple H with just being a little bit too stiff and, you know, injuring certain guys because of his style. So Triple H would, you know, it'd be reported back then that, you know, he, he would complain about getting hurt. A lot of different times but when van damme came back to the company it was like hey rob do you need anything like let me know if you need anything it's like van damme was just pleasantly surprised with uh, the changing of like the environment like this is a guy that used to hate coming to work and he was saying that uh by this time it, it, it just felt like a lot more of an accommodating place uh in terms of the atmosphere but hey let's get right down to it Awesome, awesome show here, man. I, I think from from top to bottom, this this company at the time, it, it really felt like you know the ruthless aggression era kind of merging with Ring of Honor. It definitely had that feel to it. So, summer of 2013, I would say this had to be the highlight of the WWE, like from last the last decade. I might have made that statement before, but uh, yeah, the 2013 stuff really does hold up. So. Uh, on the pre-show, I'm actually going to talk about the pre-show here because you got Roman and Seth Rollins on the pre-show as the Shield, uh, defeating the Usos. The match is a lot of fun. I mean, they they really got the crowd going. Momentum building match that set the tone for the whole pay-per-view. You know, Roman gets the win. Uh, Roman and Seth posing with the uh, tag team titles on the announce table to end this thing. So, yeah, I mean, who would have thought Roman Reigns uh, being on the pre-show? I think at this time they started running advertisements on YouTube uh, for the pre-show matches. So I think a lot of people might be baffled that you see Roman and Seth on the pre-show, but uh, they, they were probably getting an extra stream of revenue uh, from the, uh, the advertisements. They actually did go to a commercial break uh, two times during the match, but it, it, is on, it is an extra on the DVD, so I figured... Uh, I, I touch on it. And then the opener from the actual pay-per-view, we got Damian Sandow taking on Antonio Cesaro. You almost forget that Cesaro actually had the Antonio as his first name. Uh, Cody Rhodes, Dean Ambrose, Fandango, Jack Swagger, and Way Barrett. I, I thought the match was good, not great. Uh, there was a lot of exciting things. The highlight of the match is when Cesaro, I think he put Swagger, because, you know, you had a lot of, like, tag teams in this match. Cesaro and Swagger, uh, Sandow and Cody, uh, but Antonio Cesaro actually hoisted Jack. You know, Jack was actually stepping on uh, Cesaro's shoulders and tried to reach the briefcase without the ladder. And uh, Michael Cole was like, you don't need the ladder. All you have to do is reach the briefcase. You, the ladder is not part of the rules. You know, you don't need the ladder to grab the briefcase. So that was pretty funny. And then, and then Cesaro actually got knocked down. Nasty bump right there. Must see stuff. That was pretty cool. Uh, Wade Barrett was was awesome here, man. Matt Barrett at the time uh, had incredible mic skills. He still does have great mic skills. And, uh, yeah, you almost forget uh, how awesome his push was as a heel. Um, yeah, a Ambrose looked uh, like so much younger in this match. It's 
he, he looks like a totally different guy. It was just interesting to see how, how guy, you know, this is almost 10 years ago, but guys, guys still like a guy like Cody, like you just see Cody and it's just like, man, he just got so much better with age. I, I think at the time he still looked very young. He just looked like your generic, you know, mid Carter that just hadn't really grown up yet. Uh, even this time he had the mustache, but still it just felt like he was missing something. Whatever he found in AEW, a ring of honor it just, it just definitely worked you know cody definitely has transformed himself but hey it's kind of like the mark henry situation which we'll talk about later you know sometimes it just you know certain guys just take longer to, to find that x factor uh, and uh yeah damian sandow actually uh screws cody his his tag team partner and uh wins the ladder match really really fun way to kick off the pay-per-view i believe sandow besides uh cena or uh or, or, or along with cena uh, the only two guys that uh, did not cash in uh, the money in the bank uh, at this particular time. I, I, th I think Cena tried to cash it in on Raw, and then there was a disqualification. So you almost forget about the Cena thing, but Sandow's another guy that tried to cash in, and it just didn't work, which was probably the right call. I thought Sandow was a hell of a talent. Th there was a time when Sandow got you know, monumentally over, but I, I never really saw him as someone that could, uh, you know, main event pay-per-views or anything like that. But, but yeah, next up, we got Curtis Axel with Paul Heyman, believe it or not, taking on the Miz for the Intercontinental Championship. It just shows you how far the Miz fell off. Uh, you could just definitely tell they, uh, I don't, I don't know if they were punishing the Miz for that buy rate. You, you heard reports of how the Miz got blamed for that Survivor Series buy rate with The Rock really not, you know, generating the type of buys that they, uh, you know, initially were hoping for. So maybe that had something to do with it. But, yeah, it, it really felt like this company at the time was, you know, more of a wrestling promotion and, and you know, less of an entertainment promotion. So I, I was very happy with, with the overall feel of it. I thought Curtis Axel looked great here. Uh, this had to be the highlight of his career. So Heyman actually gets ejected after The Miz pulls in Eddie Guerrero and plays possum, and, and the ref actually believes Heyman hit him. So Heyman actually gets ejected. They're in Philadelphia, so it's an ECW crowd, so they're they're chanting, we want Paul. But I, I got to give a, I gotta give uh, Curtis Axel credit, man. I thought uh, th this is definitely the best performance I've seen him have. I th I, he, he looked really good here. He was able to pin The Miz. He was able to just do some really, really good stuff out there. I mean, th probably the most impressive stuff I've seen him do. I mean, this is Mr. Perfect's son. And, uh, yeah, you could argue that overall his career was a little bit disappointing. But uh, this had to be the highlight of his night. You know, getting a, getting a victory over Miz for the IC belt, the guy that just main evented WrestleMania two years earlier. And then he comes out in the main event and tries to screw uh, Daniel Bryan and CM Punk. So, so there you go. Next up, you got AJ Lee with Big E taking on Caitlyn uh, with Layla. So this is a singles match for the uh, Divas Championship. I got to say, solid stuff. Really, really good submission work from AJ. You know, AJ must have been, you know, doing a lot of stuff with Punk at the time in terms of training, submission work. You just got to be really impressed with, uh, you know, the way AJ looked here. She did some really, really intricate submissions on uh, Caitlyn's arm. I, I can't say I was blown away by Caitlyn here. She really didn't get a chance to, to show that much offense. I, I realize AJ and Caitlyn deserve a lot of credit for getting the division going in the uh, right direction. So, yeah, but th this wasn't it for Caitlyn, though. Like, I, I, I need to see whatever, whatever she did with AJ. I must have missed it. So I just would love to see more of Caitlyn. Uh, in a match where it kind of caters more to her uh, offensive style than this. All right, next up, you got Ryback uh, taking on Chris Jericho. Um, yeah, Jericho is actually a babyface here. At first, it was really hard to tell, like, uh, what direction Jericho was in at, at the time. You almost forget. But, yeah, he actually came back as a babyface at the... Um, I want to say it was one of the Royal Rumbles. Was it was it 2012 or two? Yeah, I think it was 2013. So he's officially back as a face here. I think he was more of a heel in 2012 when he uh, feuded with Punk for the best in the world stuff. So yeah, Ryback is actually a heel at this point. Um, you know, this is this is all leading up to the Heyman stuff. So Heyman eventually was with Ryback, and I remember Ryback stating that he got nothing from Heyman in terms of like advice and you know. He didn't really learn anything. My take on it is when you put Heyman with guys like John Heidenreich and Ryback, you know, even you could argue Curtis Axel, I think Heyman needs to be fully invested for him to really give enough 
to where you can really learn a lot. So that's my take on it. Yeah, I, I think the whole Punk versus Heyman thing, I, I think in retrospect, I think it did a lot of damage in multiple ways. But uh, but hey, you know, I, I thought Jericho did his job here, really tried to carry Ryback back to a good match. I mean, there were times where it was just slow as shit. And um, yeah, it was tough. I, I, I think Jericho had a tough time here for the most part. But there were some good moments. There, were, there was some, some really, really nice uh, counters from Ryback. And uh, the ending was beautiful, though. You know, Jericho must have told him, like, as soon as I do the lion salt, just schoolboy the shit out of me. And it came off great. So Jericho misses the lion salt, lands on his feet, and then Ryback gives him a beautiful schoolboy. So I love the ending. And uh, for the most part, it, it almost felt like Jericho finally got, uh, you know, almost a little bit of revenge on uh, Goldberg here. You know, I, I, I wanted to say he never got a chance to wrestle Goldberg on pay-per-view. This would be the closest thing to it happening. But Jericho did wrestle Goldberg at Bad Blood. But uh, it, it, it kind of brought back memories of, uh, you know, some of the Jericho and, and Goldberg situation. So, yeah, definitely a good effort from Jericho. I'm, I, you can't blame the match on Jericho because, you know, some would argue that he gave Van Damme um, a, a really good match the next night on Raw. You know, some some would argue that's the best Jericho Van Dam match, not their King of the Ring match. And um, Jericho and Punk arguably had their best match at, at Payback in June. So Jericho was in really good shape at this time. You know, he was doing the DDP yoga. He, he, he looked very slim. He, he definitely trimmed down at this particular time. So whatever flaws you saw in this match, it, it, it definitely felt like Ryback uh, was a little bit tough to carry. But for the, for the most part, I, I thought the match was solid, not great. All right, next up, we got Alberto Del Rio taking on Dolph Ziggler for the World Heavyweight Championship. So, yeah, so right after WrestleMania, we talked about this. Uh, Dolph cashed in the money in the bank at that post-WrestleMania crowd, and the, the fans went crazy. Uh, with. So I think at payback, Del Rio gave Ziggler multiple concussions in the actual match, not, not in real life. And uh, Del Rio wins the belt back as a heel. You know, Del Rio's face turn kind of flopped, so they turned him heel. He started blaming the fans for, you know, not being supportive of him. The, the match was awesome. Beautiful match while it lasted. I really feel like this Del Rio, Ziggler, Sheamus, uh, who else am I missing? Th this whole core, even Christian, you want to put his name in there as well. This core that was having, you know, undercard matches for this world title, it was really good. I don't know if these matches would have resonated in the main event in terms of crowd reaction, but this is just good stuff, man. Ziggler looked athletic as hell. Del Rio was technical. The kicks were beautiful from both guys. The transitions into the, um, what was it, the uh, the Billy, the, the famouser that Billy Gunn used to do. Ziggler kind of used that move. There's a lot of Billy Gunn in Ziggler. I would say that he's kind of... If you, if you want to say Billy Gunn and Shawn Michaels had a baby, it's probably going to come out looking like Dolph Ziggler. So, uh, yeah, I just thought the work that they did was great here. Unfortunately, you know, AJ actually comes out and um, she looks very indecisive, like she doesn't know what she's doing. And she looked like she wanted to help Ziggler, but accidentally ended up costing Ziggler the match. And um, as Del Rio was about to hit a super kick, she clocks Del Rio with the women's Divas title, and uh, the match ends in a DQ. Yeah, really, really flat ending. The, the crowd starts chanting, you screwed Ziggler. So uh, you almost forget that AJ and Ziggler were a thing. It seemed like AJ, I, th I think the, the joke backstage was that AJ was hooking up with everybody. Punk, Brian, Ziggler, uh, Cena. I mean, it, it just, uh, uh, Kane. Kane's another one to add to the list. But, uh, but yeah, she uh, screws Dolph Ziggler over there, and um, it felt like the Ziggler push kind of came to a halt uh, at that time. All right, next up, we got John Cena taking on Mark Henry uh, for the WWE Championship. Th this was really good, man. This, th this was awesome stuff. I mean, talk about, we talking about guys like Cody, you know, taking them a long time to master the look. I think the same thing could be said for Mark Henry in terms of uh, professional wrestling. I mean, you would definitely say, like, when you look back at that decade, like, Mark Henry didn't really start to find it until 2011. And and sometimes that happens in wrestling and sports as well. But that's kind of the art to it. Like, can you can you master the craft before it's too late? And um, it almost felt like Henry, you know, finally started to master it, you know, with the, you know, he's, with the catchphrases. He had this catchphrase called, that's what I do. And you even see him on Rampage now with the, it's time for the main event. Like he's 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 found his niche right now in, in wrestling in a non wrestling role. But uh but yeah, 
you know, Henry was a monster here. It, it definitely felt like his timing. This is probably the best David versus Goliath match I think Cena's ever had. I mean, just a lot of the match just featured John trying to pick Henry up and Henry just collapsing on Cena. So the match had good drama. I mean, some of the submissions were just very dramatic. Crowd was crazy here. The crowd was incredible. This is vintage, uh, you know, Cena, you know, a polarizing Cena match where you got the women and the kids cheering for him. You got all the uh, adults, you know, booing them. Uh, the crowd definitely, it, it definitely felt like at this time, the WWE just, you know, all around, they just, uh, they were the best promotion in the United States. You know, they, you know, TNA kind of was on the back burner by this point, you know, Ring of Honor, you know, this is during the Sinclair era. They just, you know, they just didn't recover from the, the cornet coming into the company. And it just felt like WWE was, you know, by far, you know, the, the, the only promotion, you know, really worth watching, uh, at least in the United States at this time. And yeah, I, I gotta say, man, uh, Cena and Henry, this is, this is, uh, really underrated stuff. Yeah. You, know, you could definitely argue this as being, you know, one of John Cena's, uh, top 50 matches and it, it may, maybe the best match Cena's had, you know, playing in the, um, in terms of the David versus Goliath, um, Role. So I uh, definitely great stuff, man. Awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed. It. I mean, there's going to be some people that might be a little bit baffled by the rating. And if I give it four stars or a little bit under four stars, probably wouldn't have gave it that rating at the time. But uh, yeah, I, I got to say this, this really holds up. You know, Mark, Mark Henry was uh, really found. So Mark Henry got a monster pop. Uh, you know, people were wearing his T-shirt. They, they 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 were chanting, "That's what I do." I mean, it was it it was something to see. You know, you almost forgot how good Henry got. Uh, you know, b b before you know he left the company. So I definitely say that. And then the main event, we got Randy Orton taking on Christian, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Rob Van Dam, and Sheamus. Uh, Money in the Bank ladder match for a shot at the WWE WWE Championship. I incredible match. Uh, this. This actually made my top 10 uh, WWE matches of the decade. Uh, yeah, d definitely not the best Money in the Bank ladder match. I think I probably still have to go with the first one. But in terms of talent, in terms of variety, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, watching some of our favorite wrestlers of all time, this is this has got to be up there. I mean, it's just it was just really cool. You know, this is to, to have this as Van Damme's first match back. You know, the, the crowd was chanting for RVD this whole night. And it's, it's kind of funny. It's like, I don't know if I've seen a match before where you got like three or four guys that you could argue were the most over guy throughout the whole match. I mean, it, you thought it would be RVD because, you know, fans were cheering for, for him at first. But it seemed like during the match, the fans were really behind Brian. Just every single movie did. It was just, yes, yes. I mean... Uh, at the top of their lungs and, and then punk probably got the biggest pop so it's like man who was most over guy than that i think you could make a case for for any three of those guys and uh and you know i i know christian uh takes a lot of heat you know he just turned heel in aew and i'm shocked that the at the amount of heat that christian got you know when he when he cut that promo the other night in aew i, I don't know maybe, maybe it's something about christian getting older maybe he looks more unlikable now than ever but you know kurt angle was saying that christian um you know you you want christian in these matches because he's really good at structuring them and helping out and you know planning them out so obviously christian w was great in this match and yeah I, I gotta say this christian was definitely um awesome here you know he's, he's definitely a team player um you know you would have loved to seen jericho thrown in this match it's kind of like you're stacking it up this match going 98 percent go 100 percent and just put jericho in this thing but uh they decided to go with sheamus you know sheamus just hadn't recovered from the daniel bryan stuff at this point just got a lot of anytime sheamus did anything he just got a lot of heat i don't know why but it's just that's just the way it came off and um yeah but brutal stuff man awesome awesome stuff uh you know van, van damme looked good man taking bumps off the ladder frog splash off the ladder uh yeah, just just everything here just came out great. Um, you know, Brian was just a machine in ter in terms of crowd reaction. Sheamus definitely took the biggest bump, and uh, the the bump when he took he took the bump off the ladder and actually cracked open another ladder onto the outside. Um, you know, 
lots of crazy stuff here. It's just, yeah, the, the match holds up. It, it delivered. It got almost about a half hour, so it did get time. They, they got into a rhythm. It did not feel like a clusterfuck. Very well uh, planned out. Um, the, the baffling part of the match is when Curtis Axel came out and started beating up on Brian. Then all of a sudden, he starts beating up on Punk, and then the Heyman's like, what are you doing? He's who I want to win. And then all of a sudden, Heyman turns on Punk. The latter shots that Heyman gives Punk are nasty. I don't know why they came off so brutal, but Heyman did a great job. I mean, that the last ladder shot actually busted Punk open the hard way. You saw the blood gushing from his hairline. It looked pretty crazy. So, yeah, Heyman screws uh, Punk to set up the Brock match at SummerSlam. And uh, the ending comes when Randy Orton actually RKO's Rob Van Dam off the top of the ladder, which got a great reaction. Uh, Orton got a lot of heat this night because I think there was a severe burnout from Orton and Cena at this particular time. But yeah, Randy Orton wins money in the bank. And, you know, it's just, th this is all about talent. I mean, I, you've never seen this, I've never seen this much talent thrown into a money in the bank ladder match. Uh, so it's just, it's just really, really fun to watch. Um, you know, the, the variety. I mean, this is the first time you've ever seen Brian actually mix it up with RVD. I think Punk and RVD must have met in the original ECW, maybe at that chamber match. But, uh, yeah, really, really cool stuff, man. It definitely holds up. I mean, the crowd was incredible throughout this whole night. So so we're, so I would definitely say Money in the Bank 2013, definitely within the top three of the Money in the Bank pay-per-views. I would say the top three got to be 2011, 2013, and maybe 2021. You know, that, that last year's show was, uh, you know, very emotional. The the first pay-per-view with the, with the crowd back. I thought it came off great. Those last three matches were uh, incredible. But, uh, but yeah, this show, man, it's all about talent in that main event. I mean, we've never seen this kind of depth with, uh, with, with, with the talent in that main event. So it's awesome stuff, man. So hope you guys enjoyed the uh, review. And uh, Money in the Bank tonight. We'll see how it comes out. All right.